Hi, I'm Madison Taylor. And I'm Murphy Griffin. Welcome to episode 15 of Neophyte Boat Rights. In this episode, we're going to show you how we constructed and installed the transom for our boat. So, let's get to it! So in episode 14, we went over all the theory and the procedure behind lofting the transom. Now we're going to discuss exactly how we went about constructing and installing the transom. Now we decided to construct our transom out of Honduran mahogany. Mahogany is one of the go-to species in wooden boat building thanks to its strength and rot resistance. So we're going to start with gluing up a panel using 3 inch wide mahogany boards. Once we glue up the panel, we'll cut the transom out roughly, plane it down to final thickness, and do the final shaping after that. Now for the Newfoundland trap skiff, we had a few choices to make when it came to how we were going to construct our transom. The way we've chosen to build the transom, you can think of it as having a body and a tail. And as you see, we'll do most of the shaping of the body of the transom without the tail attached. This makes it a lot easier to work with. So this is how we went about building the transom for the Newfoundland Trap Skiff. So we start by breaking down the mahogany stock that we have into more useful lengths. We then mark out the basic shape of the transom using the template that we made back in episode 14. This helps us ensure that we have enough material to get out the shape of the transom, and that we use what material we have as efficiently as we possibly can. Mahogany isn't cheap. We then resawed each individual board down closer to the final thickness. Then to the jointer to flatten and square up one of the edges for each of the boards. Then using this new edge as a reference, we ran each board through the table saw to give us another edge that was square and parallel. We then ran each board through the thicknesser, both to get us closer to the final thickness and clean up the rough cut from the bandsaw. As we'll be explaining and showing you shortly, the joints of the panel that we'll be cutting the transom out of are all splined together. So here we're routing out a groove on both edges of each board to take the splines. Using a 2x4 of white pine, we saw up the material that we need to make our splines. Finally, using the drum sander, we can tune up the thickness of the spline so that we get a nice tight fit. Now it's time to glue up the panel. Okay, so we're working towards gluing together the panel that we're going to cut the transom out of. We've got our mahogany slats roughly dimensioned and we've routed a groove in the edges. Now this groove is going to receive a pine spline, like so. Now there's a good reason for us to use pine for the spline as opposed to mahogany or some other hardwood. And that's that when the pine meets the epoxy, because it's a softwood, it's going to soak up a lot of that epoxy a lot faster than the mahogany. 
And so what it's going to do is cause the pine to actually swell up with the epoxy and it's going to tighten up this joint. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start gluing up the panel and we're only going to do it in small units first so that we can really focus on each joint of the panel and make sure that everything's really tight and nice. We used a two-part epoxy to glue up the panel. The only thing to be mindful of with epoxy is that you mix it thoroughly. Yeah. The epoxy is then poured down the channel where the pine yeah. spline is going to go, as well as brushed onto the edges of each board. Okay, so with everything really thoroughly epoxied, we're going to insert the spline. So we learned the hard way that it's really important that the spline not fit too tight in the channel. With all the added epoxy, trying to get the joint to close up can be really difficult. So it's good to aim for a loose fitting spline. We then finally add some clamps to hold the joint tight. And with that, the first subunit of the transom panel has been glued up. Now it's time to get gluing. So slowly but surely, we built up the panel that we were going to cut the transom out of. As was mentioned before, we built the panel up in small parts first and steadily glued it up until we got to the final size. There are not a lot of special considerations for this part of the process, other than as the sub-panels get bigger, you have to take special care that you're gluing everything together flat. Here, Madison is gluing up the tail of the transom. And then for the final glue up of the body of the transom. So when epoxying up the body of the transom, we took the extra precaution of using lots of calls to hold it flat. This is wise when gluing up any sort of large panel. Then you just gotta let the glue dry. So with the panel all glued up and ready to go, it was time to cut out and start shaping the transom. We start by cutting the transom roughly out at the bandsaw. We then run the panel through the drum sander. This cleans it up and brings it down to its final thickness. We then transfer the inboard and outboard lines from the template to ready the panel for final shaping. We remove most of the material at the bandsaw and then carefully shape the panel down to the final line with a variety of sanders. It's worth saying that the transom has been shaped a little wide of the inboard line. This will give us more room for the beveling process. Finally, with the body of the transom shaped, it's time to attach the tail. With that, the transom has been shaped and is ready to be installed. At this point, after doing the general shaping of the transom, usually the next natural step would be to carve the bevel into the edge of the transom. You would think that much like with the keel and the stem, once we've defined fair inboard and outboard lines, we could connect those lines with a flat face to produce a bevel. But unfortunately with the transom, we can't just simply carve a nice continuous bevel in its edge. It's a little bit more complicated than that. So recall that the Newfoundland trap skiff is planked lap strake. 
What this generally means is that the planks, say this is a plank and this is a plank, are overlapping each other. Since the planks are overlapping, when the planks hit the transom's bevel, the bevel has to be notched in just the right way in order to accommodate the overlap in the planks. Not only are the planks overlapping, but at either end of the boat, right at the very end of the run of the planking, the planks end up perfectly over top one another. So to better understand how this quick transition from overlapping planks to abutting planks affects the bevel of the transom, let's take a closer look at how the planks hit the inboard and outboard lines of our transom. As the planks run aftward, they hit the inboard face of the transom first, and here you can see that the planks are all overlapping each other. You'll notice that the planks do not fit the inboard curve perfectly. Where each plank overlaps the previous plank, you can see it departs from the inboard curve. So if we want a watertight seal on the back of the boat, then we need to cut the transom so that it fits all the little zigzag patterns that are produced by the overlapping planks. But the situation gets even more complicated. As was mentioned before, all the planks are shaped in such a way that at the very ends of the boat, the planks are stacked more or less right on top of each other. So if we look at how the planks hit the outboard curve of the transom, we'll see that the planks are stacked as opposed to offset. This means that all the ledges that we see on the inboard face of the transom have to be gradually shaped down till they form a more or less continuous curve on the outboard face. And you can see here what the shape of the bevel would actually look like if we took the planks off of the boat. And while this is an oversimplification, this does at least give you a sense of how complex the bevel of the transom ends up being in the end. So what you end up with is a situation where at one end of the bevel, the planks are overlapping one another, and at the very end of the bevel, the planks are directly on top of one another. This makes the bevel have a very complicated shape. And because of this complicated shape, it's best to shape the bevel as you move along plank by plank. So long story short, we don't shape the bevel of the transom ahead of time. We wait to shape that bevel as we attach each individual plank. So let's get back to business. The transom is going to share two bolts with the stern post. So we start by backing those two bolts out so that we can get the panel dry fit. Then using the already drilled holes in the stern post as a guide, we drill two holes in the transom so that we can bolt it to the stern post. We then prep the stern post to bed the transom panel. So with the stern post thoroughly gooped up with bedding compound, we then wrestle the transom panel into place. We then bolt it in position and then drill and countersink for a number of screws that will attach it to the stern post. It's important that all the holes are counterboard or countersunk deep enough so that we can plug these holes later. Finally, we screw the transom down with silicon bronze screws. So that's episode 15. We really hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned next time we'll be going over how we made the strong back and set up the molds for our build. If you're enjoying our channel, don't forget to like and subscribe below, and please consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. If you find our material helpful or entertaining, it really is the best way to show your support. And on that note, we've got two new patrons. Much thanks to Skip Parsons and the Right Honorable Jim Tolpin. Thanks! <laughs> Bye! Bye. Oh. <laughs>